Silencio Bruno! So if you know me, you probably know that I'm a big fan of Pixar as an animator and a an animation film enjoyer. I really like Pixar movies. They, uh, they, hmm, I am just kind of doing this out on a whim because my family is getting their house floors, like, refurnished, so I'm recording this ahead of time so I can edit it during then. Um, it's like a mess down here. There's random computer stuff. There's stuff just stacked everywhere. It's, it's, it's a fun time. So, I really don't know, I'm kind of just doing this because I kind of ran out of time. But we're doing it anyway. So, anyways, I like Pixar movies. I, I just, they're really good. I don't even know how to explain, but they're just so good at invoking emotions and just telling great stories. And, um, they're sure doing a heck of a lot better than Illuminations. But, today is not just about my love for Pixar. Today is about... I love fur. Bruh. But today, yeah, today is about my love for their newest movie, Lincoln. Now, in the past years, Pixar has been kind of with their movies. They've just been making a lot of sequels and that kind of stuff. But ever since Onward in 2020, things have been looking up. The past three movies has been, have been pretty good. Uh, they've been standalone films. They've been just good Pixar content, and of course one of those is Luca. Ooh, I really need to start the video, okay? I'm just gonna kinda say whatever comes to mind, cause I, I should have written a list for this, but let's just think. Um, one, it made me really hungry, just saying. I really like pasta, and especially seeing that pesto in there, I was like, I need some of that. I did have some of it. It's... <laughs> I guess I could say the concept is, I mean, it, I thought it was weird when I first saw it, I was like, he's a sea monster that comes to land, sounds like the Little Mermaid if you ask me. But they just did it so well, because it wasn't trying to be this huge emotional, like, thing. They just made it a really fun movie with a bit of emotions, because they're Pixar, they kind of have to do that. And I think the payoff was great. Just seeing Alberto and Luca just bond with their friendship was just so fun to me. Like, it wasn't even like there was like this looming shadow of conflict that was about to come engulf them. Like, I mean, sure, the, Luca's parents were worried about him and stuff, but it wasn't like, oh no, some monster's gonna come and destroy the world. But no, it just showed some, some two kids being friends on an island. It was just so fun. But of course, conflict has to come eventually, so. Yeah, so basically, I just really like how this movie didn't try to be too big with its story. Like, it wasn't trying to be like, the whole world is at stake, or something like that, I guess. It was just kind of, they're sea monsters having fun in Italy, and their parents are looking for them, I guess. And also, this dude's a jerk and hates them or something. And, you know, when I first saw the trailers, I was worried it was just going to be like, this town has an egregious hatred for sea monsters. If they see a sea monster, the whole town is gonna be killing them. Like, no. I mean, there were like sea monster hunters and people who didn't, who would like be extra cautious of killing them, but it wasn't like in like Coco or whatever where they all hate music. It was just like some guys hunt fish and they don't like that sea monsters are there. But it wasn't like the whole town is like, I'm just gonna take a second to talk about Alberto, because I feel like his character was so good. I loved Alberto's character. I first of all, I like how they didn't really push it with this whole dad thing. Like they weren't like didn't give so much detail as to what happened to his dad and what his dad did, but you can kind of assume his dad was terrible because he just left this kid by himself. Alberto is that kid that. Like, because his parents don't pay attention to him, or in his case, are just not there, he fends for himself, and of course, since that kind of happens, he makes himself look cooler and more, I'm the smart leader guy, you know? 
you know, like his catchphrase is, I'm basically an expert, which is just the best thing to me, because it's like, that's exactly what a kid would say if he was like him. He's the kind of kid that just would make up lies for no reason, just to make the kid think he's cool. And you can actually see it throughout the whole movie when he's like, when he starts getting je jealous of Julia talking to Luca a bit more. By the way, it was done very well. Like, I feel like a lot of movies try to just kind of overdo it with trying to show subtly how their characters are feeling, like with that kind of sort of thing. With this, it was very subtle. Like, it kind of started with little looks at first, but then you started to like really realize what was going on. Um, Luca was like the only friend he had, basically. And he was the only one that he really had a power over, where he was the leader, he was the cool one. And so starting to lose him in that dream of winning the Vespa and just traveling the world, it it was very it seemed very real to me. I don't know. It just stuck out to me a lot. Another thing, I liked how Luca's perspective changed when he started talking about space and stuff. Because it's like, oh now he's not dreaming about like, riding the Vespa with Alberto, he's dreaming about going to school with Julia, and it's just kind of that switch that kind of... I don't really know what I'm trying to say. I just really thought it was cool, I guess. Because I could really tell what was going on. I was like, he's not really interested in this anymore. He wants to go to school. Again, I just really liked how fun it was with their friendship, and just seeing it, it blossom and just become such an amazing thing. It's just... It was really fun to me. I I remember I watched it the first time, the day it came out, and I was going to make a video, but I kind of was a little bit too late to it, and I wanted to watch it again to make sure I had maximum knowledge of it. And it was so good the second time also. What else do I like? What else did I like? I like how the rules were simple. It's like, if they get wet, that part of them turns into a sea monster. And if you dry up that part well enough, you turn back to human. It was simple enough to that point, like, you could make up a scene if you wanted to with those rules, because I'd, I'd never really felt like there was a part where it was like, shouldn't have this happened instead, or how did they do that like this? It had a nice emotional ending, as most Pixar movies do, but it didn't try too hard, which was the nice one. It's like, yeah, the friends are leaving each other, and it's sad, but they will see each other again when he comes back, so it's bittersweet. So let's talk about what I don't like now. There's not a whole lot. Um, oh, there was the part where Luca and Alberto kind of get in a fight because Luca starts wanting to go to school. Alberto is getting jealous, wants to still have the Vespa and everything. And then Alberto kind of jumps in the sea to show Julia that he's a sea monster. And instead of joining him and defending him, Luca says, ah, uh, sea monster, uh. And it was supposed to be like this whole dramatic like betrayal, but it didn't really feel like it because he was already mad at him and they were already fighting because Alberto was being kind of a jerk. And you could tell Luca was already like, was already conscious of that and was kind of already acting on it. I think it would have made more sense if he kind of was holding back on that kind of defense and just Maybe like shown it like subtly like they did with um, Alberto. Just kind of show it a little bit and kind of hint at it, but don't outwardly have him be like, dude, suck, stop being so stupid. And then it would have felt more like a betrayal, especially to Alberto, because he should have seen that coming, to be honest. Luca kind of lives like in an underwater kind of city kind of deal. And it was cool, kind of. It was kind of weird, to be honest, but. I can deal with it, it's fine. But the thing is, we really only saw it at the, like, the beginning, when he was shepherding all these fish, and that's kinda it. Like, I kinda wanted to know a, a little bit more about this kinda sea land, but all we saw was he shepherds these fish, he has a house with his family, and he has neighbors, or at least like two neighbors that we know of. See, I wanted to know a bit more about these neighbors and why is he shepherding these fish? And what's it like in the deep area where his uncle is? 
I don't know. It's just kind of weird that they would show it and then not make it a really prominent part because that's that's Luca's home. So I don't know. Um, I guess that's about uh, probably about it for this video. It's just again really fun movie and you know I like how it, there wasn't really like a big plot twist to it, but um. I mean, the biggest plot twist there is, is that the two old ladies throughout the movie were actually sea monsters themselves, but, mm. anyway, that's kind of my take on Luca. Probably could have said more, but I just need to get this video recorded. I hope I'm not too, like, quiet and not entertaining, because I am trying to be a bit quiet, because I don't know if my family's asleep or not, I just need to get this recorded, so, yeah. That's where I'm at. Okay, I'll uh, see you later. Um, and uh, to infinity and beyond. That was stupid.